What what are some of your questions when people say get out of debt? What comes to your mind? When people say get out of debt, I think about credit card debt, the student loan debt, um, all that negative debt that you people use for shopping and personal things. And is your idea of debt good or bad? I have a very negative um, idea or connotation towards debt, um, and that's because that's what we were taught in the school system and the traditional education system that it's not so great. But because I have I work here and I have these resources and I've gone to your seminars. I understand that debt can be powerful and it can be used in a good way and it could generate you money. So uh, for those who are listening, uh, debt is a four letter word for most people. There are many people in my position, so called financial gurus, who say live totally debt free. And there's other people who say cut up your credit cards. And you know that's good advice for certain types of people. So you should definitely cut up your credit cards if you don't know, you can't control your spending. You should definitely. But I don't know how people live without credit cards. I don't know how you can check into a hotel, rent a car, or go shopping, go out for dinner, you know, so. But you should cut up your credit cards if you're a shopaholic. That's good advice. And the other thing about debt, there's good debt and bad debt. So this is going to be the lesson today is there's good debt and bad debt. And if you are only have bad debt, which I classify student loan debt as bad debt, the main reason it's bad debt is because it's the worst possible type of debt. You see, if I get into trouble as a businessman with debt, I can declare bankruptcy and I'm clean. But the trouble with student loan debt, you can't do that. You know, it hangs around your neck for the rest of your life. So if you're a student, you shouldn't take on student loan debt unless you absolutely 100% guaranteed that you will commit to graduating. So have you, have you seen a lot of kids drop out of school? Oh, yeah. And so the problem with student loan debt is a person has to know what are they going to study. You know, I have two friends, they're both medical doctors, and they came out of school with $500,000 in medical debt, I mean in student loan debt, but they paid it off in five years because they're medical doctors, they had high paying jobs. And so they delayed having families and all this, and the whole objective was to pay for becoming a doctor. But I think you have friends who have no idea what they're going to school for. Yeah, so I have this friend and she's changed her major like three different times from business to now nursing, and it's a lot of money and she still has no idea that what she wants to do. And she tells me, she's like, Alex, I want to change my major from nursing, but I'm already, I'm already practically done and I can't pay back this debt, so she's stuck with the nursing career and she doesn't even like it. You know, when I was your age, like I, I think I said earlier, is that my classmates were making like 110, 120,000 a year, which is not much money. But for my generation, if I made 20,000, that was a lot of money. Do you know what I mean? It was just out of proportion. So my, we were the highest paid graduates in the world, and my starting pay was about 47,000 a year. My classmates were making three times as much as me, but it's a choice we make. I didn't, I didn't really want to do what they did. Yeah. So I had to join a labor union. <laughs> uh, as, as ship's officers, we had to join the MMMP, Masters, Mates, and Pilots, which meant we were labor union guys. So labor union guys make more money. And nothing personal, but I don't want to be a union member. So I joined Standard Oil of California as a ship, shipping officer and then I didn't have to join the labor union, but I only got 47,000 a year. That was the difference. The difference is Standard Oil is still sailing, and a lot of those labor union jobs are gone because the pay got too high. Yeah. You know I mean? So there's always a good and bad, and it's hard to understand that when you're younger. But I knew when I was 22 years old, I didn't care if they paid me 100,000 a year, I wasn't going to join a union. It was just principle. My father, poor dad, was head of the teacher's union. And from what I saw, <laughs> I didn't want to be a teacher and I didn't want to be a union member. So it was kind of youthful exuberance on things. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, today it's harder because you don't know what, what, what is this mysterious high paying job. And even lawyers today are having a hard time because they don't need that many lawyers, which is a good thing. And there's artificial intelligence which is replacing a lot of the high-end jobs. Like even accountants today, they don't need accountants because artificial intelligence can do a lot of the work for them. So that's why for your generation, student loan debt, I would say, 
is possibly one of the most important things you need to decide before you take on the debt. And number one, are you going to graduate? And number two, what are you going to graduate as? Right. Any comments on that? Anything you want to talk about? So my dream and passion has always been to be an entrepreneur. But when I started studying it, I told my dad it was the last thing I would ever do because I thought that what they were teaching me was what I was going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. But these teachers don't, aren't actually practicing what they're teaching. And so they give you this wrong conception of what you're studying. And reality is, the traditional education, it's obsolete. What mattered back then does not apply to how you're going to run your business now. You know, today, if I was in your position, you know, I was pretty clear when I was about 15, I wanted to sail the seas. Uh, I, I sailed huge ships, you know, throughout the world. But that was a dream of a kid. You know, and by the time I was 22, I was tired of it. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to sail the world anymore. So I understand, you know, what it's like to keep, what they call it is finding your way in life, right? Yeah. That's not easy. Mm -hmm. So I commend you guys, and that's why we're doing the Millennial Money is because as these programs progress, you're going to find out, in my opinion, you guys have a harder road to go through than I did. For me, it was really easy. There was a lot of jobs, economy was booming and all this, and uh, it was easier. So you guys have got to be smarter. And debt is the two-edged sword out there. So you use debt, I use debt, but the more debt you use, actually you have to be smarter. So you can use debt to get richer, it can also use debt to wipe you out. So that's why you know, I continue on saying we need financial education. To just say to somebody, get out of debt, well, that's not accurate. You use debt, don't you? Debt is a great thing, and to be big and to be very successful, debt is a very useful weapon. Well, but you have to be very careful. That's correct. So the other thing, with when people say live below your means, <laughs> You don't like to live below your means, do you? No. No. And I think when you say to somebody, live below your means, you wipe the spirit out. It's like saying to somebody, if you want to lose weight, go on a starvation diet. It doesn't make you healthier to starve yourself. So I would rather get financially educated. That's why I read, read your books, because I want to, this is my greatest asset. I want to feed my brain so that I can expand my means without getting into excessive debt or where I start to lose because debt, like I say, is a two-edged sword. But telling somebody to live below your means is almost inhumane. I never felt good doing it. I wanted to strive to do better every day. I want to do better every day. I liked a good life. Like I tell the story of uh, taxiing underneath your jet. You know, I've, I was in my jet, but it was a little Lear jet. And I look up and there's a 727, and I taxi under it. I said, "Holy man, you know, it's it's big boys and their toys." But nonetheless, it inspired me. I said, "Okay, I'm in a Learjet now. It's time to step up." And it doesn't mean the jet will make me happier. What makes me happier is the wanting to get better, to get smarter, to do better. Well, I have a friend who was not successful at all, but was really up and coming, and. He had a thing. He would only fly first class. I'm not saying do this because for somebody it right. won't work, but he needed that mentally. Right. He wanted to fly first class because mentally he wanted to think he was the best and that's it. And even though he didn't have much money at the time, this is years ago, he would always fly. I used to criticize him, but it put him in a good state of mind and he became a very, very successful guy. Yes. Very, very successful. Yes. And I o I've always remembered that he would never fly coach. He would always fly first class, even though he didn't have the means to fly. So, look, it's complicated, but whatever it takes to train right. that. Whatever makes you feel better about yourself, stronger, more confident, to want to do better. And I think really that's the issue. And we're at the stage of our lives right now, we, you know, to ask for more is not really it but to do better, to feel better about ourselves is still important, it is very important. So that's why I don't like saying live below your means and scrimp and all that because, you know, shopping is fun, nice, nice houses are fun. At the same time, you have to be very careful. Yes, but you have to be responsible about Correct. it. Correct. The hardest thing that I've witnessed over the last year 
You're seeing people that were very hardworking and very conservative that invested in the stocks. And right. I'm not talking about high flying stocks, I'm talking about very solid companies. And their net worth is 50% of what it was a year ago, and they haven't done anything wrong. Right. Now, they put their money in stocks, so I guess you could say that's wrong, but it's really not wrong, no. because historically that's been okay. So they went into conservative stocks, and a year later they're worth 50%, and all they've done is worked. And that's the hardest thing I've seen. That's a tragedy. The thing that I want to say is this. You can invest in gold and lose money. You can invest in real estate and lose money. You can lose stocks and lose money. You can invest in oil and lose money. You can also make a lot of money, all those things. So really the reason we get together is because your financial intelligence, your financial IQ makes something valuable or not valuable. Like I said, you have to know a good investment from a bad investment, good advice from bad advice.